Hey guys, so today we're going to go over JMRI operations. So I, you can see my screen here. I've got uh, Panel Pro up. So a uh, link, by the way, for downloading this program is down in the description. Uh, install it and in the Panel Pro portion of it, um, you will have operations here. Um, so I know you can uh, take this off of the actual main menu, I think, but uh, there's a setting when you go into settings to uh, actually get this here. But you'll find operations and uh, let's go through it. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to step through each one of these uh, menu items here in turn and uh, set up all of your trains, your routes, your cars, your locations and everything like that. And I know it kind of went backwards right there. But first thing to do, head into settings over here and uh, you take a look at the uh, first thing is your road name. So enter the name, whatever you want to call your railroad, um, depending on you know, the direction if you're doing a prototype like I am, in my case, my line runs from LA and then runs kind of south through Orange County and ends in Huntington Beach. So I selected north south. Uh, it's an HO scale, maximum train length here. Pretty much everything else I left alone. Um, but uh, this is pretty much like in your yard or your staging area. What's the maximum amount of cars that you can fit in there? And obviously this is 650 feet. That's kind of what I settled on. Um, that lets me get uh, all of my cars onto the sort of departure um, track and still have room to run around either side, right? So uh, that comes into play with uh, when you start setting up trains and stuff like that. But that's probably the most important thing you can set over here. Uh, to start out with the rest of it, I pretty much just left alone. You go ahead and save it and away you go. That's settings. Um, next, you're going to want to set up your locations. And in my weird, goofy setup here, it uh, keeps popping up on my other screen. So I'll drag that over here we'll make it big. And well, I guess you don't need to make it big. Let's see. We'll just do that. So hopefully I'm not blocking it. There we go. Um, so you can see in my uh, layout, my... Um, my trains actually start out in Los Nitos Yard, um, but it was the last thing that I added. So it's just uh, location wise here in the window. It's displayed last. Um, but then they head out to Santa Fe Springs, uh, Cerrito, Stanton, Westminster, ending up in Huntington Beach. Now, when you click the add button down here, you can see here it comes up like this. You can put in your location. Yeah, you put in whether trains are traveling north or south into that location and uh, what type of box cars they're going to have or what it's not box cars what type of cars they're going to have here and important thing right down here is whether it's just a spur or a yard so only the yard is labeled as a yard here uh, and then you hit add location and it'll add it right there so let's take a look at say uh, los nitos yard here and here's what it looks like so basically cars come in and leave the yard going north and south so that's selected pretty much almost all the cars here are selected other than like the engines and locomotives because i don't actually use that portion of the program um and then what you do is you actually add the track down here so you hit the add yard track button and that's after um you know you selected yard over here and if we take a look at that, this is pretty much what comes up so i gave it my name the length again is the total amount of all the tracks um, that are in the yard. So I have four tracks. Um, I came up with just 1,200. It seems to work, able to fit all of my uh, cars in, in the yard. And again, trains that come in and out are going both north and south. And everything is selected so this yard can get all of the cars, right? Um, and then you just save that location. And if we take a look at, say, my first location that the cars, they leave the yard, they go into Santa Fe Springs here. Um, again, same thing. You kind of set set it up for which way the cars are going, I guess, into the yard, right? Service by train, which, which way the train is actually traveling. I'm using both at the moment here. And uh, the important thing here is once you set start putting in the locations, um, then you're going to start putting in the individual tracks right here. And that's why you've got spurs selected right over here. When you uh, add a spur, um, you'll come up with yet another window like this. And so, for instance, here's my Liberty Vegetable Oil uh, track, and I've determined that I can fit 120 feet in there. Um, so if we take a look at any rail right here, let me go ahead and clean some of this up. 
there we go so liberty um, vegetable oil is this end right over here and it's actually the same spur that services um whatever the heck the other one was right there <laughs> can't remember now oh yeah united polymer so both of those gets um serviced by that same spur uh, right there uh, but i figured I'm, I'm gonna have 120 feet that gives me like you know two box cars um, plus a little wiggle room right there and so let me minimize that um, that's where i come up with that 120 feet and then i'm selecting what type of cars are serviced over there so liberty uh, vegetable oil gets box cars uh, reefers tankers and tank vegetable there's different types of cars that you can select again out of this grouping right here that uh, represents all of the different locations right but then you can select it for the individual industry here or i guess it's the spur track right um haven't touched any of this other stuff i just leave that all default um if we take a look at southern wine and spirits uh, same thing here and i kind of gave it a little bit more room there because it's a longer run um, and again, I'm keeping both north and southbound trains uh, going in and out of that uh, of that spur. So that's setting up uh, the actual locations and the actual spurs. And you kind of keep going down the line. You add all those in. And the next thing you're going to do is enter all of your cars. And again, things like putting it on my other window there. Let me try to size that up again. I don't know how to get it to uh, not do that, but all right, here we go. So here's all my cars, um, and it's easy enough. You just add a car. So if I was to add a car, you get this pop up. You select the road name, uh, the number. You can edit and add and delete road names. Uh, you can add and delete types of cars. So you select the type of car that it is. Select the length of the car. Um, and again, you can add different uh, lengths right there. This one's this is just a default right here. And then uh, you select the actual current location for it. And everything else on here, I leave alone other than the color. So I select the color. So if I actually take a look at, uh, let's take a look at any one of these cars here. We'll just pick this one right here. So here's my UP uh, box car. Here's the road number. Um, it's a 50 foot uh, length. And its current location, because it's already been out on the layout, is in Westminster, and it's at SoCal Edison, right, on that uh, spur. And then it's a yellow car. So that's easy enough. You add all the cars in there. Um, in my case, when I first added them in, I put all the cars in the yard. And so they all started out at the at the, you know, Los Nitos yard and then have been out and about. So this is the current location of all the cars on my layout. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of them in the yard and other ones already set out in different places. So once you get your cars in there, you're going to come back down and you're going to go over to locomotives. I don't use, you can use that, but, uh, since I only have like one locomotive, I, it's just the one that I use all the time. So I don't, I don't let the program pick my locomotives or anything. I just do that myself. Um, routes. So drag this back over from my other window again. So then you're going to set up a route and you can see I've got two routes set up here. Um, this one down here is the primary LOA 32. I believe that's the real world prototype name for the route that I'm modeling here. Um, and what you do is you come down here, you hit add. And when you add it, you'll get uh, pretty much an empty one here. You put in the name, you can put in comments if you want. And then you start adding locations by selecting the location, adding it right and i've got all of my locations uh in here already for this for this route and you can move the different ones up and down by pushing the buttons here <laughs> you know moving them up and down but this basically follows along with um the route of the train so the train starts in the yard right the train leaves the yard in the south direction and basically heads all the way to um, huntington beach right um it goes to santa fe good then it goes to cerritos it goes to stanton westminster huntington beach is on here twice i've just figured this out the other day um the program wants you to put in two of them here because you can see one is south and one is north um so it comes into huntington beach uh south and then you have a second one here and it the train departs from huntington beach heading back north because it's going back to the yard here right and it arrives 
um, into the yard going north. Uh, the amount of moves that you have is um, how many cars or, you know, how many pickups and setups or pickups and set outs, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, right? So picking up a car is one, setting out a car is one, right? So in this case, in the yard, I'm really only picking up cars out of the yard and we're heading down to Orange County. So this really says you can only take 10 cars. And I figured that 10 cars is a decent amount on my layout. You can adjust that up and down, you know, depending on, on your, uh, on your you know individual layouts and how much room you have um over here and the other ones i've been kind of playing around with these numbers just to get them working right um and so for my case like santa fe springs which if you remember includes uh three let me bring this up over here it includes three different uh industries here right so you can see santa fe springs at the top and this is Obviously not quite prototypical, but just the way the track layout is, it was best for me to put everything on the upper end right here as in Santa Fe Springs and everything on the bottom end here, uh, Cerritos. So Liberty Vegetable Oil, United Plywood, and Southern Wine and Spirits are all considered to be in Santa Fe Springs, and that's where we set up those locations, whereas Shasta Beverage and Royal Plywood are considered to be Cerritos. Okay, thank you. All right, let me get rid of that. And uh, yeah, so I figured there's uh, like five moves for that. And so those three industries um, will get a total of five moves. So meaning that out of those three industries, we can set out five cars or we can pick up five cars or the program will do a mixture of both. Random, I'm not quite sure what actually it does right now, but you can see you got pickups and setups and you basically just select yes or no um, at these locations. Do you want to pick things up? Do you want to set things out? Um, you can see I've got yes for everything and that seems to work fine for me right now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you do. So once you've got all of those items in there and kind of important that I figured out at the very end over here, I've got 10 cars, which means that it's, or, you know, 10 moves, meaning that when the train returns back into the yard, um, it can have a maximum of 10 moves, meaning basically it's going to set out um, 10 cars or arrive with 10 cars or, or less. It just depends on what the program decides to have you do. Sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's eight, but it usually tries to uh, do uh, 10 cars, you know, the number that you actually put in here, right? All right, so now that we've got our route set up, you have to go back in here and you have to set up a train. Once again, my train is going over to the other screen. Here we go. All right, so you can see I've got two trains set up over here. And what you do is you hit add a train and you'll come up with, come on window. We'll look at the primary one here. You'll come up with this window. Uh, you can call it whatever you want again i'm just calling it the loa 32 train uh, description is it's a local to orange county uh i'm not doing scheduling so departure times and all this i just leave blank or whatever i just leave it at zeros uh, the route is where now you're going to select your route remember i had two routes and so the 32 route is the one that i'm using and uh, once you actually save it after selecting this it should come up over here and you can see it's uh, it's got the route again, right from the yard all the way down through the different locations to Huntington Beach and then leaving Huntington Beach going back to the yard uh, gives you all the different uh, types of cars again. Um, and these are all selected based on what cars we selected in the different locations. Right. Or, or you can just add like Mike, I don't get coal cars, so that's not selected here. Again, locomotives, I don't bother with that, and all these optional things with cabooses and blah, blah, blah. I don't do that. Once you save that, now you're ready to hit build over here in the trains section. So you'd come back here in trains if you're not already there. And what you do is you hit build. So you can either, the check marks here, if you have multiple trains, you can build a whole bunch of them. You just check mark them all and you click the build down here or you can individually just build by clicking right there. And you can see that the status has changed. It says uh, partial 19 of 27 cars. So let's take a look and see what this uh, 
what this looks like, right? Now, in order to look at the manifest, I'm um, sorry, you can actually look at it right here when you click on preview or just click the preview button here. And I know this is really tiny, but basically um, here's the manifest. And this is what I use to print out um, and go work the yard right here, right? And again, I know it's tiny right here on the screen, but you can see I've got it. Pickups are color coded um, and you do that in the settings uh, for the manifest and you can uh, change the colors. You know, so I have pickups, you know, being blue uh, set outs are red and it gives you every single location. And what we'll do is we'll pop over and actually I'll show you a decent, uh, you know, shot of what this looks like. Um, actually, I thought I had it lying around here. Now I don't. But anyway. Um, so it leaves the yard, it's got these cars, and it tells you it's, down here, it says uh, it's leaving with nine cars, and then it uh, arrives at uh, Santa Fe Springs, and it gives you all of the different locations here on uh, you know what you're gonna be doing, which cars are getting picked up, which ones are getting set out here in red, then the next location, the next location, the next location. Finally, in this section, remember I had the two Huntington beaches, um, so the program knows, and I, apparently that's new with the newest version, I think. I may be wrong on that, but uh, that's why you had to put the two different locations because it says down here, uh, scheduled work at Huntington Beach. And then at the bottom, it says the train departs Huntington Beach northbound, right? And we're going back to the yard. And so that last part right here is all of the cars that we had picked up along the way. And uh, they're going back into the yard, right? Uh, one quirky thing is, um, so now you take that, you print it out, and uh, yeah, you can go do your thing. And then when you come back, once you've actually done it, you would click move, and it goes steps through each one of the locations until it um, gets to terminate, and that's it. And so the program has registered where your cars have gone, which ones you picked up, which ones you dropped off, where everything is. It keeps track of all the, the cars, right? Um, if you don't like what the train has done, right? You can always hit the reset button down here, right? Don't hit delete because it'll just delete it. Um, and don't hit, don't step through and go to terminate because then the cars are all over the place and they're in the wrong spots and whatnot. You just want to reset down here, right? And so if you reset it, then you can make changes like uh, if you want to change the route around a little bit or change these numbers a little bit to play around and see what, what the program actually does. Uh, that's how you how you would do that. But again, I'm not going to make any changes, so I'm just going to hit build again, and it should pretty much just give us the exact same. Come on, where to go? Preview. <laughs> um, where is the preview? I was thinking about it. It's probably crashing right now, but that's where you get the preview, and um, it's ready to go. Right. Uh, one little weird thing is it, to actually print the manifest, you have print options from the train section. Okay, yeah, let me bring that over from the other screen. We'll make that a little bit big, but here's where you set the colors for pickups, set outs, um, and then this is for locomotives, these top two lines, and then these over here are the actual cars. And you could, uh, you know, say what it, you can put in anything right here, any kind of text, but we're calling it pickups and set outs. And uh, you can select the different items that you want displayed in that manifest. So I have road, the actual, you know, railroad or the car name, the, uh, you know, whether it's UP or whatever. Um, the number, the type, whether it's a box car or a tanker, the length is nice to have, the color is nice to have. Um, for pickups, you want to have location selected here. And for setouts, you want to have the destination selected here, right? And uh, once you save that, in order to actually print the manifest, you have to go into the actual train, um, right? Print it, and then go over here, and that's where you print it. So I would print it here. If I do preview, that's what we're going to print. And uh, you can go in and change the font settings and all that kind of stuff to make it fit. I I modulate or I change mine depending on how long the train is because I just like to have it on one page. Um, so the font's a little bit small. But let's go ahead and I'll show you the actual uh, printout so you can see what it looks like. All right, so I grabbed the uh, clipboard with the printed manifest. I say hello to Benjamin. That's uh, that's the pup over there. He's chilling out. 
Anyway, um, so yeah, here's what it looks like when you actually get it printed out, if I can get it to focus. And uh, I think this is pretty much the exact same one that I was showing you in the program there. Um, so you can see that uh, at the yard, I've got all my cars listed. Um, you can see where it says it's going to depart southbound, right, with nine cars. Santa Fe, we're going to end up... Uh, Looking like picking up one from uh, Southern Wine and Spirits, and then we're setting out four cars, two to the vegetable oil, another one or another two to uh, Southern Wine and Spirits. Then we're departing there with six cars, going to Cerritos, and uh, we're picking up two cars there, one from the Royal Plywood, another one from Shasta Beverage, and dropping them off, and so forth and so on. So it goes all the way down the line, and then finally at Huntington Beach. Um, you could see at the bottom right there it says departs Huntington Beach northbound now with 10 cars so those are all the different uh, blue cars that we picked up and we end up at the end in Los Nidos with those 10 cars and train terminates right there so that's what it looks like and again I, I changed the font size just so it fits on on one nice page like so and you can put in a logo if you want and all that kind of good stuff. So that's my quick and dirty how to set up um, JMRI operations and use it on your layout. It, it, it may be a little daunting when you first start screwing around with it, but it's not that bad. And, uh, you know, once you get everything set up, it's nice that, uh, you know, instead of like sitting there and trying to figure out a schedule and trying to figure out which cars are going to move which way this this adds a little bit of a sort of surprise to it you know you just hit build and it comes up and, and here it is and this is a nice surprise you, you look at it at the list and you know okay look at I, I gotta go pick up these cars and I gotta go drop these ones off and it's sort of randomized you know you're not putting it together beforehand the program is doing it for you and uh, it sort of helps with, uh, I don't know, being a little bit more realistic. You know, you show up like you're, like you're the real engineer and you're going to, you know, well, what am I doing today? You know, <laughs> instead of like you actually doing it yourself. And uh, yeah, I tried to do, or initially on my layout, I was thinking of doing like, you know, card, car, car cards and way bills and all that stuff. But, you know, I guess that's fine for older railroads you know that are based in like 1970 and and older you know but uh in the modern era they don't use that and so they you, you know everything's computerized and so you know the they use a program more like this where they have manifests and switching lists and and you can print out individual switching lists if you're going to sort of divide this up with different trains and different users and all that stuff i just use this manifest as what i how I run the actual train, right? So I hope that was a little bit helpful. Let me know if you uh, if you like that or if you use JMRI or if you thought about using it but kind of looked uh, too confusing to you. Um, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the, uh, the thumbs up there, like button, and uh, the bell button again. You got to keep saying that all the time so you get you get uh, you know notified when I do a new video. Um, I will be doing probably this train. I think I'm going to record actual operations, which will be this one right here later on today. And uh, that should be up in the next day or so. So hope you enjoy that. Till next time, take care, guys. Benjamin, say bye to everybody.